Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pat Lantry. I support our Revisto clients uh, in the Northeast along with our customer success team. Thank you again for joining today's Hard Hat Huddle. My goal is today uh, is to provide you five super simple tips in optimizing Revisto uh, on your iPad. This is intended to be a very short huddle up session, no more than 10 minutes highlighting best practices um, that I pass on to my clients um, to, again, optimize the use of Revisto on their iPads um, for the best performance. Sometimes they get maybe overlooked or in the excitement of, uh, of rolling out Revisto uh, may get forgotten, but these are really important. Um, uh, although they're very basic, um, they're really key to making sure that Revisto works for your end users on your iPad. So I'm gonna to record today's session to, to share uh, with your teams. Again, this is just basic stuff. If you're looking for more advanced workflows uh, on Revisto 5.0 on the iPad, there's an upcoming uh, webinar that's going to be hosted by Brett Settles next Tuesday, September 15th. So go to our website uh, to sign up for that as well. Uh, so let me switch over um, to, uh, to the agenda here. And the plan today is to, uh, to share with you how you can enable your end users to work both on as well as offline. Um, there's some cases where we don't get an internet connection. We're on the project site and we wanna make sure uh, your team can continue to work offline. We're also gonna point out some performance improvers, just some quick changes or some tweaks uh, within your preferences on your iPad um, for really optimal performance of Revisto. And we're also gonna show you as you know, VDC professionals, how you can make it even easier for your teams out in the field um, to locate sheets and drawings uh, on their iPad and navigate even more intuitively uh, in 3D. And I don't wanna steal Brett's thunder for next week, but I will uh, quickly reveal a, a new button that's been asked for by our customers uh, for a while um, that's included in, uh, in the uh, upcoming version of, uh, of 5.0. So let's get to it. Let me, uh, let me open up a demo project. I'm gonna open up this uh, medical center. And I actually got ahead of myself here. Let me start from the beginning. And actually, before opening it up, I just want to point out in the project gallery, so let me use my annotation tools here. In the project gallery, we see all the projects that are available to open up. I want to point out so the key to working offline is hitting this gear button. So let me um, use my annotation tools here. It's hitting this, this gear button. And when I click on that gear button, let's get it open up this box. And the key to working offline, because we don't always have internet uh, connectivity. It may be an underground garage. It's important to hit this download per field. So maybe suggestion is when you know the guys uh, get into the trailer, they pour their first cup of coffee, hit that download the per field button, and that will actually cache the model or cache the project on their device. And then they could work uh, throughout the day, regardless of what level of internet connection they have uh, on their iPad. So Real key for you guys to coach your teams to, um, to hit that gear button, click download for field, and that will cache the project locally to the, to the iPad. So once that's cached locally, we'll get to open it up. And I am gonna point out, let me get rid of these. I'm gonna point out that um, in 5.0, you're also able to load and unload links. So Revisto is compressing your model in 5.0, and you can make that model even lighter by unloading links. So say I don't want the topography model uh, included. I could just uncheck that, click load selected uh, links here at the bottom, and that's going to open up the model. So preferences, there are a, a couple of quick changes here that we can make one time and be golden. So I'm gonna click on the preferences button and I'm gonna go to general first. And a quick tip uh, as VDC professionals, if you'd like to set up your users to open up 3D um, or open up 2D or even 
get right into the heart of Revisto in the issue tracker as their default screen. Just click the down, uh, the down arrow right here. So let me go back, annotation tools. Click the down arrow right here, click the down arrow. And now I can choose 2D, 3D, or the issue tracker as the default screen for when our end users in the field open up. It may be helpful if your end users are most comfortable with 2D to set that default screen as 2D. So once they open up Revisto, they're looking at the plans that are familiar to them. Another key here in the general preferences, let me highlight it, the auto update projects. So the suggestion is here to uncheck, uncheck the auto update projects. Um, if your iPad gets a whiff of, uh, of connectivity or Wi-Fi, it's Revisto is going to be intelligent enough to try to, to sync the project and to avoid any interruptions to our uh, users out in the field. My suggestion is to uncheck, to uncheck that auto update projects. So going down the line next to, uh, to navigation, let me clear these out again. Navigation, um, my suggestion is to ratchet down at first uh, your, your mouse sensitivity or your iPad sensitivity. So I ratchet these down around to the 20s just until I get the feel of it. So I'm not flying around too fast in that first hour that I'm using Revisto on my iPad. So let me, uh, let me kind of get my feet wet. I ratchet those down. And then when I become more comfortable, I can go back to preferences and, uh, and ratchet those back up. So that's helpful for, for new users that are just beginning to use Revisto uh, on the iPad. Uh, what else here? So graphics. So we want to make a couple changes to, to graphics. Um, first, it's really not necessary to have it on this high level, beautiful graphics. Um, I'm going to click the down arrow and change that to good, which works really well out in the field. I'm going to click OK. So that's the first change I'm going to make to graphics. Additionally, and this is really important, we're going to uncheck all these boxes with the exception of rendering. So I'm going to uncheck tone mapping, uncheck the SSAQ, and uncheck downscale rendering resolution. And I'm just going to leave the double sided materials uh, checked. So this actually improves uh, the performance of Revisto on the iPad by unchecking those boxes and leaving the double-sided materials checked. And then lastly, in camera, I'm going to change the visibility distance. So this is a good tip of ratcheting up the visibility distance to about 40,000. And this is helpful in, in capturing the camera view. So I'm going to go up to 40. And those are the changes that I'd recommend to make in your preferences. And again, you do this once and you're golden. Uh, it's set it and forget it after making those changes. A Revisto on your iPad is gonna work even better. So I'm gonna get out of there and I'm gonna jump to 2D. So as we know, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of drawings on our project. Uh, Revisto has made it easier to search for those drawings with a filtering tool. So if I go, let me clear these out again. If I go to, uh, to the 2D button, uh, enabling um, our 2D environment, I'm going to click on the, uh, the filter, the top left corner up here. So I'm going to click on that filter. And now I have the ability to, to search these filters. Um, so I can, for example, search, uh, search by sheet name. And I can go down to, let's say, this site plan lighting. And as a, as a VDC professional or as someone that is overseeing the project, I could add tags, which would make it even simpler um, for our end users to, to find their drawing. So I'm going to go back to, uh, to the info associated with this drawing. And I'm going to click the edit button next to tags right here. And I'm going to add lighting as another shortcut for our end users to quickly find the drawings and sheets associated with lighting. So I'm going to click on add and done. And now if we take a step back, we set our filters. Now I could go into the search box, type in lighting.
highlight lighting. And now I've brought up all three sheets which have been tagged by lighting. So really easy shortcut for our end users. They don't have to sift through all the drawings and sheets uh, within the project. Um, with the help of their project admin that sets some of these tags, they can quickly open up a drawing associated with lighting. And of course they could see their pins representing the issues that have been made on this drawing down here at the bottom and then change the setting to markups, view those markups that have been made. And of course, if you click on none, it's a completely blank sheet of any markups and pins. Quick reminder, uh, I'm not included in my, in my top five, um, but if I click on the, uh, the 3D button, it allows me to teleport myself to anywhere within the drawing. So really good, helpful tip that you don't have to fly through or walk through the entire project to get where you want to go. If you're more familiar with a drawing or sheet, bring up that sheet of drawing, then click on that jump to 3D and then just double tap and it brings me right into the 3D model. So the 3D model, and this is why I had the camera enabled, uh, it's really easy to navigate. If I click on the, my left thumb, it enables um, our mouse. And then at my right thumb, gives me my point of view. So it really becomes very easy to navigate but it can become even more natural um, or instinctual to navigate by clicking on the Walkman, which enables gravity, and clicking on, and I think this is an important button to, to highlight as well using the annotation tools, the gyroscope button. So by clicking on the gyroscope button, I can now walk through and point at what I'm seeing. So I can go above the ceiling and see the lights, point it down to the floor, move it left, move it right, and actually walk through the space with the gyroscope and the gravity applied. So that makes it even more kind of um, instinctual uh, for our end users to, uh, to navigate here in 3D, um, which is I think uh, really helpful tip to pass on that gyroscope button and the gravity man uh, for our end users to turn on. Now I'd like to give you a sneak peek at one of the new additional uh, features of 5.0. It's been requested by our customers now um, for a while and our developer, development team has listened and have added a back button. So the way that you may want to use this back button is maybe you are looking at some viewpoints that have been created. So I'm flipping through these viewpoints. And maybe I want to retrace my steps. Now we have that very desirable back button. So I click on the back button down here at the bottom left corner. And I think there may be a little bit of a lag between the Zoom meeting and my iPad, which I need to fix real here, real quick. Bear with me. I think the, uh, the projector app froze here on me, so bear with me. Restart that. All right, let me get this screen mirroring going again. Let me flip it over here. Make sure that I'm still sharing. All right, so I'm just clicking through those viewpoints. And if I want to retrace my steps, or if I want just want to go back, you know, and doing anything within the application, now 
I have the ability to go back using the back button here with the newly added button here in 5.0. So it looks like I went over time a little bit, which I apologize for. Again, these were basic and simple suggestions to improve or optimize your performance in Revisto. If you're looking for more advanced workflows on your iPad with Revisto 5.0, tune in to Brett Settle's session, which is next Tuesday, September 15th, in which he's going to show how you could utilize Revisto uh, out in the iPad with the new 5.0 workflows, which really makes the data in your model much more actionable and much more accessible uh, to your field team. I'll take a quick look here uh, and see if there are any quick questions. But again, uh, Brett Settles will be going over his more advanced workflows next week. Um, and again, I want to keep this short and brief uh, so you guys can go about your, your busy work days. Yep, so it doesn't look like like there are any questions. So I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, if you have any, any immediate questions, please contact your territory manager or your customer, customer success team manager, uh, and they'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and have a great day.